Respected ulama, respected huffaz, respected elders, brothers and sisters listening at home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In recent days, weeks, in fact a few months, in this country and around Europe, there has been a huge issue around one of the most important aspects of a human being's life. People have been shopping in Tesco's and they've been buying beef lasagna. People have been buying bird's eye food People have been find, buying Findus and they've been going to Iceland and Sainsbury's and Lidl and Aldi. And after a long time, after digesting the meal, after eating the meal, enjoying the meal, saying yum yum to the meal, after a long time later, going back to buy the same meal again, lots of times. After a long time, it turned out that the beef lasagna that they were eating was gora lasagna, <laughs> horse lasagna. In some products, 100% horse meat. In some products, 100% horse meat. In some products, 60% horse meat. And two months since the revelation that these products have had horse meat instead of beef meat, two months later, despite all the resources that these huge organizations, corporations like Tesco, like Aldi, Governments, European governments, we're not talking about third world countries here. We're talking about first world countries who are rich. Two months later, they cannot tell us where that horse meat came from. Two months. First they said it was from Ireland. Correct me if I'm wrong. Then they said it was from France. 
So the police went to Ireland on the ship, on the aeroplane. Then they were told, no, go to France. So they went to France. Mm -hmm. Then they went to Romania. Then they went to Switzerland. Then they went to Holland. Then they came back to France. And only yesterday in the news, more products were found to have horse meat. So whilst they're still looking where the horses are, they still can't find the horses, horse meat is still coming into the production. Huge dilemma. Huge problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created human beings, when He created us, He gives an order in the Quran. And He says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ I did not create jinn, and I did not create human beings except for my worship. Sirf meri ibadat hi ke liye. Mene tum ko only for my worship. And the concept of worship is not only salah, is not only zakat, is not only hajj. The concept of worship is huge, it's broad. All your life, from the time you are born till the time you die, you have to be in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people think that standing in the first surf with a jubba and a Beard, this is worship. Bas. Then you go home, you beat your wife, no problem. And it happens in our communities. Happens. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this in the hadith. He said, people sleep with their wives at night and they beat them during the day. Sharam nayati. Prophet ﷺ said this. And there are many stories in our communities. Because for them, the concept of worship is just performing salah. They do not understand that the best human being is that person who is best to his wives. And the Prophet ﷺ said this. And then he also said that I am best to my wife. Being good to your spouses, husbands good to the wife, wife good to the husband, this is all part of deen. Being good to your neighbors is part of deen. Yet dil, this heart which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every human being is very valuable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you hurt a heart, agar kisi dil ko taklif di tumne, so there is no barrier between the da'wah to Muslim. Muslim ki baddua or Allah ke darmiyan koi hijab nahi. When a heart is hurting because somebody has oppressed them, then there is no barrier between that heart and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dalil, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned about da'wah to Muslims, beware. Of the ittaqi da'wat al madlum. And a dusri hadith, Abko Sunnah. Once the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that during the time of Banu Israel, during the time of Banu Israel, there was a woman. And she was very good. Nake of it. But there was one problem. There was a cat which you used to keep as a pet. You keep pets at home. Some people keep cats. Some people keep parrots. There's a parrot somebody sent me yesterday. Saying, Allah Akbar. But I don't know. So we keep pets. So she had a pet which was a cat. And this cat, she used to do zulm on the cat. She used to tie up the cat. Everything else she was good. Nake on it. <coughs> Prophet ﷺ said that because she used to tie up the cat, she would be going to the fire of hell. 
And another woman, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, she was not very good. But once she saw a dog that was very thirsty. So she, there was a well nearby. Water. She went, she took off her leather sock, and she put the leather sock down into the well and got some water for the dog and gave it to the dog. The Prophet ﷺ said, because of this action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her paradise. Chote chote awal. A kutta, a dog, that when it comes next to you on the street, Milton Street, you come out of the masjid, you see a dog, you cross the road. <laughs> I'm going for namaz and it might touch my clothes, make napak, it might make it impure. That dog that makes your clothes impure. But because a person made the heart of a dog happy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became happy. And when a woman made a heart of a cat unhappy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became unhappy. So this heart is very dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This heart is very dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why we need to be very, very careful in our concept of our deen. Your neighbors are important, your society is important, your wife and children are also important. People say that let's look after a planet so that our children can live in a good planet afterwards. But we should be thinking that let's make our children better so that they can look after the planet. Planet ki fikr hai ke aage ja ke bachcho ka kya hal hoga jab planet khatam ho jayega. Lekin bachcho ki fikr nahi ke wo kis tarah ka So the concept of deen is much more broader. It includes salah, zakah, hajj, fasting, but includes everything else. And one of the most important facets of Islam and Iman is to earn halal and to eat halal. One of the most important. Many of the ulama have said this is from the usul and the pillars of the deen. Pillars of the religion. And when we think about this concept of religion, Allah says so many times in the Quran, Aqeem salah Aqeem salah Establish salah, establish salah, establish salah. And it's one of the five pillars. After somebody becomes Muslim, one of the five pillars is salah. So we have to perform salah. Another pillar is fasting in the month of Ramadan. Another pillar is zakat. Another pillar is hajj. <coughs> but if a child is five years old, is salah first on him? No. If a child is ten years old, is salah first on him? No. You should teach them salah at the age of seven and make them perform salah, but still not first. Until they become valid, until they become mature, salah is not first on a person. Although it's a pillar of Islam. A person is not mature. Is fasting for us on them. A person is very, very sick. Is fasting for us on them. These are pillars of Islam I'm talking about. And you're telling me it's not necessary for them to do. Hajj. A person is not financially or physically able to perform Hajj. Is it for us on them? No. It's a pillar of Islam and yet not for us. A person does not have the nisar of zakat, does not have enough money to pay zakat. It's a pillar of Islam, but do they need to pay zakat? No. The ulama are saying that they don't. This facet of Islam which I am talking about today, eating halal, when a child is in the womb of the mother, when a child is in the womb of the mother, it is necessary. And when an old gentleman, Muslim gentleman, is in the hospital, in the last throes of life, in the last days of life, 
it is still first on them to eat halal. From birth or even before birth to death, the person has to eat halal. Hazrat Mawlana Qari Muhammad Tayyib Sahib, Rahmatullah, he mentions a story about a very, very pious king from Afghanistan in the olden days. He mentions his name as well. And he says that once this king came into the palace, into the bedroom where the queen was, and he was very upset. His face was sad. So the queen asked, what has happened? So he said, I've received extremely bad news, very sad news. So what's the sad news? He said, an army had attacked Afghanistan. So I sent our son, the prince, with an army to combat the other army and to defend our land. And the news has come that unfortunately he lost the battle. And he is running away from the other army and he is coming back. And that other army is chasing him. So there are two bad news. One, we have lost some land. And secondly, our son has run away from the battlefield. The queen said, it's not true. The queen said, it's not true. He said, I received the royal message. In the olden days, you used to get royal messages. Even today, most probably the queen doesn't use royal name, although it's royal. <laughs> she gets special messages. He said, I've received this news from the royal messenger. She said, it's not true. He said, I've received the news from someone else as well. She said, it's not true. He thought to himself, oh, no, he had a con <laughs> 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 Who is going to argue with this woman? She can't take this. That's why she keeps on saying no. So just leave her. She'll keep on saying all night, it's not true, it's not true, it's not true. I'm going to say it's true, it's true, it's true. Just leave it. The next day he went out. And in the evening when he came back, he was very happy. Very, very happy. She said, you look very happy today. Bhaarkush. He said, you were right. I just received royal message that our son won the battle and the army was defeated and they went away. So she said, I told you. I told you. So he said, how did you know? How did you know? So she goes, I can't tell you. I'm not going to tell you. So he said, Kya aapko inham aata hai? Do you get touch? So she said, I am a queen. I live in luxury. Main aise ghar mein reh kar, aise mahal mein reh kar, mujhe kaise kash paayega? How am I going to get kashf if I'm living in this kind of palace? So he said, then tell me, tell me what happened. How do you know? You must know. So she goes, Raz, this is a secret, I'm not going to tell you. He said, I'm your husband. You have to tell me. So then eventually she goes, okay, don't tell anybody else. She said, when I became pregnant with this child, when I became pregnant with this child, I made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will not feed this child anything that is haram or doubtful. Haram bi nahi khilaungi or shak wala maal bi nahi khilaungi. And therefore what I did is I started making hats and topis. I did not take money from the treasury. I did not take your credit card or your money 
and use that either. Today, women use men's credit cards. <laughs> Shopping. So I did not take anything of yours. I started making topis secretly. Whilst he was away, she used to make topi. And she used to get her servant to go and sell it in the market. Allahu Akbar. And she used to come back with that money. And she used to buy food with that money. And she used to eat that food. <coughs> pure halal. Pure halal kamai. Pure halal income. And then when he was born, I did not give milk to the child except in the state of wudu. And without saying Bismillah, I never fed the child. So I knew that that child who has been brought up on halal would never flee from the battlefield. Itna yaqeen. And today, what do we feed our children? What do our children eat? Kisi ko kuch pata nahi. Gada kha raha hai. Gora kha raha hai. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Before a child is born, when he's in the womb, till a person dies, a person should try and make sure that everything they eat is halal. Everything they eat is halal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us laws. He gave Christians laws. Nasara ko bhi hukam diya tha. Ki ye kha sakte, ye nahi kha sakte. He gave the Jews laws. Yahud ko bhi hukam diya ki is tarah ka kha sakte, is tarah ka nahi kha sakte. And he has given Muslim laws. That this is what you can eat and this is what you cannot eat. And this order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must not think that it is only uh, in this world. If we look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when he created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, and he created Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam, he told them that you can roam around in Jannah anywhere, go anywhere. Jahan kahin ki jana wa jannah ki andar seyakam. And he said, eat whatever you want. Eat whatever you want. Except, لَا تَقْرَضَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam, he told them that they can go and roam anywhere in Jannah. Number one. Number two, he said, you can eat anything you want in Jannah. Except do not go near this tree. Just one tree. لا تقرب هذه الشجرة. Just one tree. Everything else was free for them. This was before Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu was sent down in this world. Now after everyone has been sent down in this world and then we go back, inshallah to Jannah. What come to Jannah? Inshallah, when everyone goes to Jannah, Inshallah. I can hear the sisters at home. To uswat, koi paabandi nahi hogi khane mein. There will be no restrictions in food then. Allah will say, Kulu wa shrabu hani am bima kuntum ta'amal. Eat and drink whatever you want because of the actions that you have done. There will be no tree that Allah will say, don't go near this tree. But this was a test, this was in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he wanted to send Adam alayhi salatu wa salam to this world. So he told him, لا تقرب هذه الشجر. So dietary laws, and if you look in the Quran, if you look in the hadith, the only restriction that you find that Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu wa salam was given was dietary restriction. Or koi restriction nahi mita. If you look in the Quran, there is no other restriction that Azad Adam alayhi salatu wa was told, do not do this, do not do this, do not do this. He was only told about dietary law, that eat anything you want except this tree. Yeah. Then what happened? Allah mentions in the Quran, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمْ أَمَا وُولِيَ عَنْهُمَ مِنْ سَوْآتِهِمَا 
وقال ما نهاكما ربكما عن هذه الشجرة إلا أن تكون ملكين أو تكون من الخالدين شيطان كان ومسبر إن ذا إيس Do you know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you not to eat from this tree? Go on. Go on. You know, like our friends, go, come on, let's go. Let's have a good night out. Come on, let's go. Masjid ke liye koi nikata. Come on, let's go. Football ke liye ke liye, football dekhne ke liye. Come on, let's go. Friday night out, let's go. Take away restaurant, let's go. لیکن مسجد کے لیے کوئی نہیں کہتا سو شیطان سے کم آن لیس گو کو آن کو آن ایت فرم دات ٹری سو حضرت آدم علیہ السلام ہوا علیہ السلام ریمیمبر اللہ سے دونٹ کو نیر دا ٹری اور لکھت دا ورز اللہ اللہ یوزد اللہ نے سے دونٹ ایت فرم دا ٹری اللہ اللہ نے یہ نہیں کہا کہ اس درخت میں سے مر کھا اللہ نے قریب بھی مر جا وائی If you look at the Quran, the Quran tells you, لا تقرب الزنا إنه كان فاحشة وساء السبيلة. Do not go near zina. He didn't say don't commit zina. He said do not even go near zina. It's like if you go near zina, 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 then you will be filled with your heart. Your heart will feel temptation towards going towards zina, so do not even go near zina. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that Adam alayhi salam, do not go near the tree because the tree is so tempting, the fruit will be so tempting, that then you will think, oh, let me taste it. La taqraba ahadi shajar. Fawasu salahum as shaytan. Shaytan gave them whispers. And then he said that the only reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you not to go near the tree is that if you eat from this tree, you will become angels. Or you will live forever and ever. It's the tree of eternity. You will live forever and ever. Now we scientists are looking that there is that we can live forever and ever. They are still looking. Some people have paid hundreds of millions of pounds to freeze their bodies so that when they find this medicine to make people alive, then they can use it. They don't know. When the soul goes, then Allah goes to the soul. Allah gives everyone to the soul. Amen. 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 Recently, there was a girl who passed away. She was about 25, 26. 25, 26 years old. And on that same day that she got run down and knocked over, in the evening, a boy was coming to look for marriage. Arranged marriage. Bad On the same night, same evening. With the parents' consent, bad girl Now just imagine this girl the night before, sitting with her parents. They must have discussed that this boy is coming to see you tomorrow. And these are the questions that you need to prepare for. Or these are the questions you need to ask him. Which is right. There's nothing wrong with this. But my brothers and sisters, That next day, she passed away. Before she asked the questions to the man or the boy. And we hope and we pray that she was prepared for the questions of the Qabr. We hope and pray that she was prepared for the questions of the Qabr. And the questions of the grave Everyone knows what questions you're going to be asked. Who is your Lord? Who is your Prophet? What is your Deen? Lekin rat kar, yaad kar ke nahi aayega. There are not questions that you can read and learn them that, oh, when I go in the Qabr, this is what I need to, my, my Lord is Allah, my Lord is Allah, my Nabi is Prophet Muhammad, my Nabi. Is tarah jawab nahi aayega. Amal, amal se aayega. If you act upon your Deen, the question, the answer to the questions will become easy. 
And if you do not act upon the deen, then it doesn't matter. Kitna hifz kiya ho. University lecturers who are non-Muslim are lecturing about Islam and they know more about Islam than you and I here. But when they go into the grave, if they have not read the kalima, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, do you think they will know the answer to the question in the grave? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all a good death on Iman. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. Hamesha dua karni chahi. Always. So Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu wa salam and Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam they are being told that you will become angels. You will live forever and ever. And slowly, slowly, after Allah had told them, a long time later, because you sometimes forget, we all forget. They went near the tree. And then they saw the fruit of the tree. Wow. And they went near the tree and they ate from the tree. This was a mistake. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ أَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَنَسِيَ وَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمَ He did not stay on that mistake. He repented straight away. And he kept on repenting until the ulama and the mufassirin write in the tafasir that for 40 years continuously he cried. 40 years. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him the words رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لِنَكُونَنَا مِنَ الْقَاسِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. So Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam were given dietary laws in Jannah. But when they ate from the tree, there were consequences. فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ بَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا وَتَفِقَا يَخْسِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah says in the Quran, what happened? When they tasted, فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ the clothes that they were wearing came off straight away. This was a consequence, negative consequence of eating something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them not to eat. If you do something in this world that Allah has told you not to do, there will always be a negative consequence until you make tawbah. Always. مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوَنْ كَثِيرٌ Allah says in the Quran that majority of the troubles that we have is because of our own actions. And Allah forgives most of our actions, but even then there are negative consequences. So there was a negative consequence. As soon as the clothes came off, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that they started taking the leaves from the trees to cover themselves. It is not natural to become naked. Today you find a group called naturists. There's a group, my youngsters are smiling. Naturists. Naturists are people who believe that it's natural to stay, because you're born naked, so it's natural to stay naked. And there are special places in this country where they go, where they're all naked, and they walk around naked. natural. If this was natural, then when Adam alayhi salatu was salam, and Hawa alayhi salatu was salam, lost their clothes because of the fruit that they ate, then they would not have taken the leaves straight away to cover themselves. From the Quran. وَتَفِقَى يَخْسِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ it is not natural. It is natural to cover yourselves and to hide the shape of your body. This is natural. Unfortunately, we live in a time when people are forgetting the nature. And it could be because of the food that we eat. Because the food affects you. The food affects the way that you think. The food affects the way that you behave. 
There's a famous saying, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. And they usually use, usually use this saying on fat people. Or I'll put it more kindly, obese people. Obesity is a big problem. Alhamdulillah. I went somewhere to make bayan and I was talking about health, importance of health. And I said obesity is a big problem. Or what happened to Bale Lok Bete Wait? Ab Ye Bayan Kate Way Muchy Fil Kyala Yet to Dekra Muj Guru Gurka Dekra Ab Mira Kya Hola Bayan ki bad me kursi se utunga yane Yabu may put deti jay. So whilst I was doing bayan and I mentioned about obesity and people eating too much food and that's why they become fat, then I saw them too looking at me. And then I said, but some people, they are born fat. <laughs> and everyone here who thinks they are fat, they are born fat. Fear what no kushoge, maybe kushoge. So sometimes we have to be very careful. What we say in the bayan. <laughs> so, yaha par jo apne aap ko fat samajhte hai, ya they think they are big, ye khane ki wajah se nahi. Ha, ye pedaishi hai. Jeans, jisko jeans ke liye sakte, ye jeans pente ho nahi. Wo to button bhi nahi laga sakte. Wo jeans nahi. Wo jeans jo jism ke andar hote ho. So Hazrat Adam alayhi salat was salam when he ate from the tree, the clothes came off, but they suddenly took the leaves from the tree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Jews order of how to eat, what to eat. He gave the Christians orders what to eat, what not to eat. Allah has mentioned to us in the Quran what to eat and what not to eat and through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi And there are many orders. Vegetables you are allowed to eat. Animals. You are allowed to eat grazing animals. Bahimatul an'am. Allah says in the Quran, Hurmat lakum bahimatul an'am. And Allah says what is haram for us as well. Hurrimat alaykumul maytatu wa damu wa lahmul khinzir wa ma'u illa li ghayri illa ibn. That's the khulasa, four things. Uske baad jo aata hai, wo maita ke andar aata hai. Whatever comes after this, it comes in maita. Wal mun khaliqatu wal maqoodatu wal mutaradiyatu wal natihatu wa maa akala sabu illa maa dakaitu. That all comes in maita. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that haram, what is haram in animals? Dead animals are haram for you. Dead animals are haram. And that is why in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ That when you slaughter an animal Now dead animals, every animal that we eat is dead. So we don't eat live animals. Okay? So when it says dead animals, what does it mean? It means those animals that have died by themselves naturally or by falling from a building. A lamb came suddenly on top of Masjid Farooq <laughs> and fell on Milton Street. And somebody came out of namaz and said, Hey, Subhanallah. <laughs> Allah ki taraf se mal wa salwa. <laughs> Is he allowed to eat it? If it's dead, then he can't eat it. If it's alive, take your pen knife up. Bismillah, Allah. <laughs> Bismillah Allah. Then it's halal. Then quickly take it home before the rest come out of the masjid. <laughs> then it's man or salwa from Allah. Definitely man or salwa. So dead animals are haram. But if you want to make an animal which is halal for you to eat, like a lamb or a sheep or a cow or a camel or a chicken, then you have to slaughter it in a certain way, which the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned in the hadith. 
You have to slit its throat quickly. And you have to say Allah's name. And you have to let the blood flow. Eat that on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name has been taken. Do not eat that on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name has not been taken. Agar kisi janwar ko Allah ke naam ke peghair zabah kiya gaya ho to usko mat khao. La ta'kulu mimma lam yuthkar ismullahi alayhi. Or kisi peer ke naam kisi but ke naam agar koi janwar zabah kiya gaya usko mat khao. Allah ke naam ke alawa kisi aur ke naam ke upar zabah kiya gaya to usko mat khao. And these mushrikeen and their friends, they came to the Muslims and they tried to confuse them. This is when these verses came down. And they said to them, You're very strange people. He said, Why? He said, The animal which you kill, you eat, and the animal which Allah kills, you don't eat. This is a dead animal. Ye to Allah ne mara hai aur tum isko nahi khate aur jo tumne apne haath se zabah kiya hai usko khate ho They were trying to confuse the Muslims. To Allah taak ne ye ayat hi utaya. Subhanallah. Fakuru min ma zikr asmullah yari. Ha this is what I have done zabah but I have taken the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aur Allah ke naam mein jo taaseer hoti hai isko hum ko samajhne ki zarurat hai. This is what we need to understand. And this animal here, it has been killed by itself. Allah has killed it. Allah has taken the life. But it is not halal because Allah ka naam nahi liya liya. This is a very important thing to understand. That one animal, which has been killed by Allah ka naam liya liya, usko Allah ka naam liya liya liya. اور دوسرا جانور جس کے اوپر اللہ کا نام نہیں لیا گیا اللہ پاک کہتے ہیں اس کو مت کھاؤ یعنی اللہ کے نام کی کتنی تحصیل ہوگی ان انیمل آن وچ اللہ کے نام کی کتنی تحصیل ہوگی اللہ کہتے ہیں ایٹ ایٹ وات ایفیکٹ ایس در ان نام کی اللہ کہتے ہیں اللہ کہتے ہیں ایٹ ایٹ انیمل ان انیمل آن وچ اللہ کے نام کی کتنی تحصیل ہوگی اللہ کہتے ہیں ایٹ 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 ناو ان these laws which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. There was a time when it was very easy to practice these laws. Those people who have come from India, Pakistan, Africa, Bangladesh, they all know, even now, that you go and get an animal and you slaughter it in your, in your house. No problem. Balke jo log yaha par 1950s, 60s, 70s mein Even in the 80s humne dekha hai. Okay, you used to get an animal, you used to take it home, you used to leave it in the backyard. And then when it's eat day, Bismillah, Allah Akbar. People used to do it. But now, the food industry is extremely complex. Extremely complex. And you cannot see what you are eating. You do not know what you are eating. You do not know how it's been prepared for you. Koi pata nahi, kuch khabar nahi, ki ye khana kis tarah unho ne tayyar kiya hai humare liye. Pehle bohat aasaan tha. Khud zabah karte te. But now it's very difficult to see. And just like in every single industry and area, there is fraud. In every single area of business, you will find fraud. For example, clothing. You find fraud in clothing. There's an industry which is genuine. And there is an industry which is fake. Is there fraud in clothing? Adidas. You find genuine Adidas. And you find fake Adidas. Gucci. Not Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> you find genuine Gucci and you find 
Fake Gucci. Hugo Boss. Genuine. Fake. Armani. Genuine. Fake. Even the children, two years old, three years old, you bring, bring them a fake Adidas. Say, Dad, who are you, who are you trying to kid, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this has got four stripes. <laughs> <laughs> this has got four stripes. Two years old, the child can understand that this is not right. Fraud. Handbags. You find fraud in handbags. Our sisters now, I don't know the names of the handbags. <laughs> but 500 pound handbag. 500 pounds. Usme cheese to no team pound ki hi Or credit card bhi husband ka hi hoga. Lekin handbag 500 pounds. Logo ko dikhana hai. But then you get the same label. Handbag in the market for five pounds. The fake one. Watches. You find Rolex, real Rolex. And you find fake Rolex. Cars. Cloned cars. You've heard about cars cloned? Sometimes people buy a car for five thousand pounds. And they haven't checked their HPI. And about two weeks later, the police knocks on the door and says, This isn't the way to get this car from. It's stolen. And it's 5,000 pounds gone. Because it was cloned. Houses. Not fake houses. What to give Jaime? That's like the wolf and the three little pig story. Huff and I puff and I blow your house down. That's fake houses. <laughs> but, Abhi, I'm listening. Especially in London, because the rent here is much less. But in London, there was a Polish guy. He was living in, rented in a house. And he was going back to Poland. So what he did, he advertised the house for rent in Poland. <laughs> And if you want to rent this house, come and have a look. So one family came. They were very happy. He took deposit. And he said, you move in after one month. Another family came. They were very happy. Took deposit. One, come back after one month. Ten families. He took deposit. About 20,000 pounds. Then he went back to Poland. He gave the first family the key. The next day, another family comes knocking on the door. So what are you doing here? Then another family comes. What are you doing here? And then the real owner comes. They say, what are you doing here? This is my house. So there's fraud in renting houses. In fact, on the radio yesterday, I heard that somebody is on trial because he sold fake bomb detector equipment. <laughs> to the army in Iraq. So people were going around with bomb detectors and they weren't bomb detectors. Most probably a few people might have got blown up as well because they never detected the bombs. So in every area of business we find fraud. Every area of business. Every area of business. So were we so foolish? Or were we so dumb, were we so blind, were we so deaf that we thought that there was no food fraud going on? No fraud in the food industry. Is that what we were thinking? In every single area we know there is fraud. And we are very, very careful. But when it came to food, we thought there's no food fraud. But now you see that even the large corporations that are making millions and billions of pounds a year profit even they are not immune from fraud in the food industry. In the food industry. But as Muslims, as Muslims, if a non-Muslim goes into Tesco 
and buys a beef lasagna. And now he's realized that he was eating horse. It doesn't affect his deen. It doesn't affect his religion. But if a Muslim finds out that instead of lamb, he was eating lamb with pork inside, if a Muslim finds out that he was eating chicken with pork DNA, then it affects your deen and our deen and our religion. Big difference. If they eat horse, it doesn't make them any, any worse. Any, it doesn't make any difference for them. But for us, it's a huge issue. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to stay away from pork. How can a Muslim even contemplate eating pork? It makes you sick. And yet, what is happening in the Muslim community, done by our own Muslims? The responsibility to feed halal is not your responsibility. It is the responsibility of the food industry. Whoever is selling food, it is their responsibility. If somebody is working in the food industry, it is their responsibility. If they label something halal, it has to be halal. It's their responsibility. This is why the Prophet ﷺ mentions Al-Tajir, Al-Saduq, Al-Ameen on the Day of Judgment will be Ma'al Nabiyyin, Wa Siddiqeen, Wa Shuhada. A Tajir, a businessman. A businessman, he's doing business. He's not doing sajda all day in the masjid. He's doing business. And yet the Prophet ﷺ said that if there is a Tajir, if there is a businessman who is truthful and he is trustworthy, always telling the truth to people, never cheating anybody, then on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet ﷺ says that he will be with the Prophets. He will be with the martyrs, and he will be with the likes of Hazrat Siddiq Akbar, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. He was doing business, and yet he will be with these people on the day of judgment. Why? Because when a person does business, there is so much tem temptation to cheat, cheat. So much temptation. Kahi paanch pound idhar se mil jaye, dus pound zyada idhar se mil jaye, so pound idhar se mil jaye. Kisko pata chalega? Isko dhoka de diya, usko dhoka de diya. Kisko pata chalega? So much temptation. And because of this temptation, any businessman who stays away from that temptation and he is always truthful and he is always trustworthy will be with the Anbiya and the Siddiqeen and the Shuhada on the Day of Judgment. Itna bada sawab. Kyu? This is the reason. It's very difficult. And this goes for slaughtermen, and this goes for slaughterhouses, and this goes for food retailers as well. If they are truthful, if they are trustworthy, then on the Day of Judgment, they are doing a great favor for themselves on the Day of Judgment. But, what is the reality out there? Just like we find fake in Adidas, just like we find fake in Nike, just like we find fake in Rolex, just like we find fake in cars, just like we find fake in every single area of business, we find huge fraud in the food business and in, even in the halal business as well. And I will give you some examples of deceit. And this is from recorded events which are in the press, easily available. If I was to give you stories that I know of myself, that is totally separate. Let me just give you stories that are in the press. Horse meat. You've all heard about the horse meat. Horse meat labeled as halal meat. Thirteenth February, the Guardian newspaper mentioned in their article. On Wednesday, twelfth February, Dutch broadcaster NOS reported that Jan Fassen was sentenced in January 2012, last year, this is even before the two months here, last year, in January 2012, Jan Fassen, who lives in Holland, but now he's somewhere in one of the islands, people can't find him. He was sentenced in January 2012 for deliberately marketing 
South American horse meat as halal slaughtered beef and falsifying documents. And if you read the whole article, it says that he was buying horse meat from Mexico. He was buying horse meat from Brazil. And that horse meat used to come to his factory in Holland. He used to make mints out of this horse meat and then label the boxes as halal beef and then sell it to Muslim, uh, French Muslims in France. Documented. Pork labelled as halal. Traces of pork DNA found in halal prison meat. And you know this story. February 4th, 2013. The Ministry of Justice is to suspend a firm supplying meat to prisons after tests found that it may have provided pies and pasties described as halal but with traces of pork DNA. Halal pa pies, halal pasties, which are going into the prison service. To who? Muslim prisoners. Today you and I are outside. When we go shopping in Walsall, then we have a choice. You and I have a choice. <coughs> shall I go to this shop or shall I go to this shop? The poor prisoners didn't have a choice. They didn't have a choice. If they were given something labelled as halal, they expected it to be halal. But unfortunately it was halal, pies and pasties with traces of pork DNA. May Allah preserve them. May Allah save us all from this kind of deceit. The next one might make you jump because it's about a kangaroo. <laughs> kangaroo and pork labelled as halal. Cape Town, South Africa, November 2011. Undercover footage showing how a company in Cape Town making haram meat halal. Orion Cold Storage Company. And if anyone wants to write this down and see this on YouTube, there's a whole documentary of how a cold storage facility bigger than this masjid used to receive boxes and boxes of cut kangaroo and pork. Boxes and boxes. And during the middle of the night, they used to get a heat gun and take off the labels and replace the labels, relabeling them as halal sheep and beef products. And they used to sell it to the Muslim community in Cape Town. And the sad thing was that this Orion Cold Storage Company was certified by a halal organization. It was certified by a halal organization in South Africa. <coughs> BBC Panorama, 2003. Chickens that are coming into UK, which are slaughtered in Holland and Belgium. Undercover footage again. And this was in this country they showed this, September 2000, uh, 2003, if you saw it. After the chickens are slaughtered, they come into this one facility and is put in water tanks. And these chickens are filled with water to increase the weight, to increase the weight of the chickens so that they can get more money for those chickens. To increase the weight, they are filled with more water. But the water won't stay in the chickens. So they had this technique that they used to get pork enzymes. From pork, they used to get some enzymes and they used to inject these chickens with these pork enzymes to hold the water. And then these chickens were labelled halal and sold in the streets of London and UK. 
documented. Recently, horse DNA found in halal beef burgers. And you saw this in Lancashire schools. Muslim children were being given birth beef burgers. Schools, eh? Aap logo bhi, aap log bhi school ke andar kya khilaya ja rahe uski fikar kar. We need to take responsibility for our own children. Beef burgers, they were supposed to be beef and they found host DNA in those halal beef burgers. Now if a beef burger is not halal and you find horse in there, it doesn't make a difference to anybody. It was just mislabeling and instead of eating beef, they ate horse. And they can... But here, halal beef burgers, which has horse DNA, Horse DNA is haram for us because it's horse, it's maita, it's dead animal. And therefore it makes a huge difference for the Muslim community. I can keep on quoting you examples after examples. I've got a whole list here. I was on the radio a couple of weeks ago. And this Muslim gentleman who used to work in Holland at a chicken factory, he phoned in. And he said, Main waha kaam karta tha. Urdu mein baat usne. He said, I used to work in this chicken factory. And I used to label chickens halal. I never knew where the chickens used to come from. For years I did this. Fir baad mein mujhe pata chala ke ye chicken haram thi. He said that afterwards I found out that these chickens were haram and we were labeling them halal. But then he said, that a long bearded man used to come to collect these chickens in a white van. A long bearded man used to come and collect these chickens in a white van to go, go and sell in the UK. <coughs> I'll give you one more example. Qurbani. Qurbani is the most sacred slaughter of the year. Ek mataba qurbani kote is the most important food that we eat in the whole year. Scotland, 2007. And this was reported three months later by the Daily Herald in Scotland. One of Scotland's biggest meat producers has been accused of supplying fake halal lamb to Islamic butchers. And what happened? That the qurbani that was done in Scotland for majority of the people in Glasgow, where majority of the Muslim community is, the Qurbani was slaughtered by a non-Muslim. Mm -hmm. And because the company belonged to a non-Muslim, he used to have a Muslim slaughterman, but either he was sick or he had an argument with him and he wasn't there for Eid day. So he got the non-Muslim to slaughter. After slaughtering all these Qurbanis, when he went to deliver these qurbanis, when he went to deliver these qurbanis, the non-Muslim, he said to the Muslim butchers that I need to tell you something, that today our Muslim slaughterman was not there. So my non-Muslim slaughterman who was there, he has slaughtered all these qurbanis for you. So I'm just telling you, in case you don't want these, unone ka ke nai Oh Allah. Our Muslims, they knew that it was haram. But even when it comes to Qurbani, they have no shame for the Muslim community. This is the condition of the Muslim community. This is what we are dealing with. Because we cannot see what is happening around us. There is fraud going on in every single area of business, including halal food. And one is fraud. The other is labeling halal with a criteria which you and I do not accept as halal. Bahat se logo ne halal ka tarika badal diya. Ke halal kisko kehte hai? You and I know that halal is done by a Muslim who says Bismillahi Allahu Akbar on the animal 
and cuts the veins and the blood gushes out. This is what is halal to us. But there is a new type of halal, which is labeled as halal, which is known as machine slaughter. Machine is zabah. When chickens are slaughtered, Muslim should be standing there saying, Bismillah, Allah Akbar. But there is another way which has been accepted by some people, and which is now the majority of the chickens in this country, in Europe, in South America, even in Saudi Arabia, majority of these chickens are slaughtered from machine slaughter. And what happens? The chickens are coming on a rail. They are first stunned. And after being stunned, then they come towards a blade that is going round and round at speed. Huge speed is going round and round. And this circular blade is going round and round and then the chickens that have been stunned, they will come and their necks will be cut by the blade. And this is the new way of making chickens halal. And these are being sold in Walsall, in Birmingham, in London, around the UK, around Europe, and in Arab countries as well. You might ask the question, how is the Bismillah being read? So, there are many ways in how the Bismillah is being read. Some people are saying that when we start the machine to go round and round, we say Bismillah Allah Akbar. And then a million chickens are cut with that one Bismillah. That's one way, one method, which people have said, this is our halal way. Other people have said that we put people on the side. So when the blade is going round and round, the people on the side are standing there with their tasbih, Bismillah Allah, Bismillah Allah, Bismillah Allah, Bismillah Allah, Bismillah Allah, Allah, all day Bismillah Allah. Now if anyone wants a job to read tasbih, then contact these certifying organizations. <laughs> Muft me pesa milega. Das bhi bhi parenge. Vaha bhi sawab. Or yaha bhi pese. Bismillah Allah. Bismillah Allah. And then when I was looking into this machine slaughter in 2005, I phoned up a slaughterhouse which is owned by non-Muslims but they do halal slaughter. Because some, someone who lives near me a shop they said, phone this slaughterhouse. They'll tell you how they do it. So I phoned them up. And I asked them, that, do you do halal? They said, yes. I said, can I speak to a person who knows the method of how you are doing halal? So he said, I don't know. I'll get somebody to speak to you. So after two or three phone calls, I got the person, the plant manager, who knew how they did halal. So he said to me, I asked him the question, that, do you do halal? He said, yes. I said, do you do manual slaughter or do you do machine slaughter? He said, we do machine slaughter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I kept a straight face on the phone. And then I asked the question, that, so how is the rendition of the blessing done on the animals? Is it done by a tape recorder? I forgot to tell you about the tape recorder. <laughs> Some people, uh, we, there are non-Muslims who work in slaughterhouses who have written how they have seen tape recorders being played, but now they've changed to CD. <laughs> <laughs> and some have changed to MP3. <laughs> and now some have gone to YouTube. <laughs> Bismillah Allah, Bismillah Allah on YouTube all day. So that's one. So he said, no, no, we don't do tape recorder. Now we had somebody who came in and he wrote Bismillah Allah on the blade. And our blade has become blessed blade and now we do Bismillah Allah. <laughs> so our chickens are now cut with the blessed blade. <laughs> I'm sitting in the masjid, true story. And he said to me, that our certifying organization came last week and they gave us a certificate. Oh. 
Allah. One of my alim colleagues, he saw another certificate somewhere in one of the towns in the Midlands. And he thought, I've never heard of this certification organization. And there was a phone number. So he phoned them up. And he asked them that, I have seen your certificate in this restaurant. So I wanted to ask, what kind of halal do you do? You know, there's lots of different halals now. Yeah. So do you accept manual slaughter only, or do you accept machine slaughter as well? So the person over the phone said, we, do, we accept manual slaughter and we accept machine slaughter. <coughs> so he said, how is the Bismillah done? Is it done through a person standing on the side? Is it done by a person when he presses the machine? Or is it done by uh, the tape recorder or the MP3? Or is it, how is it done? He said, no, no. Now we have a new fatwa. We don't need Bismillah. Hum kya kha rahe? Aap log kya kha rahe? This is the question. What are we eating? You don't know, I don't know. Unless, unless you are cautious. <coughs> In the hadith, the Prophet says, Al halal bayyin, wal haram bayyin. Halal is clear, manual slaughter. Say Bismillah, cut the required veins, let the blood gush out, no machine slaughter, no stunning, very clear. Haram is clear, dead animal, no Bismillah, haram, no slaughter, haram. And in between mushtabihat, Prophet said, wa bainahuma mushtabihat. In between there are doubtful things. And the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever stays away from doubtful, they have saved their honor and they have saved their deen. Whoever stays away from doubtful, not from haram, haram se to bachnai hai. Whoever stays away from doubtful, then they have saved their honor and they have saved their deen. And Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi has brought this hadith in Kitab al-Iman. It's like your iman ka juz hai. Halal, haram, mushtabiyat is from your iman. If you are cautious over your halal and staying away from haram and even doubtful, you will save your iman. And it is in this hadith that the Prophet ﷺ mentions later on. The Prophet ﷺ says in this hadith, halal is clear, haram is clear, and in between, there are doubtful things. And if you save yourself from doubtful things, then you will save your iman and you will save your honor. You will save your honor. And then the Prophet ﷺ gave an example that if a farmer is grazing his sheep in his pasture, in his land, but then the sheep <coughs> gets to the border of his land, then it is very possible that it might trespass on the land of the neighbor. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's land is making sure that you do not trespass over haram. You do not trespass over haram. And then the Prophet sallallahu said that there is one part of your body. If it is straight, then your whole body will be straight. And if it is deviated, then your whole body will be deviated. Allah wahi al qalb, and that is the heart. In the same hadith where Prophet ﷺ mentions halal bayin, wal haram bayin, that means that when you practice halal, when you eat halal, when you acquire halal, then it will have a good effect on your heart. When you acquire haram, it will have a negative effect on your heart. Prophet is warning us in this hadith. And in another hadith, the Prophet says, Inna Allah tayyibun la yakmalu illa tayyiba. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure, and He does not accept anything except that which is pure. Allah only accepts pure. This is why, if a person walked into Masjid al now, 
doesn't have wudu and comes straight here in the first saf comes half an hour before salah and stands here and then prays salah behind the imam uski namaz hogi kyun nahi hogi wudu nahi hai allah is pure allah wants pure external purity internal purity the person is praying salah but because he does not have external purity his salah is not accepted in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions if you give sadaqa but it is not pure allah will not accept that but if it is pure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it with his right hand <laughs> namaz you need external purity so that your salah is accepted zakat sadaqa it has to be from halal then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it amal and actions allah will only accept once you have internal purity the food in your stomach is halal the food in your stomach is halal <coughs> this is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says inna allah tayyibun la yahmalu illa tayyiba that verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure he does not accept anything except that which is pure and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said to the messengers amara amara al mu'minin bima amara bihi al mursalin he has given the same order to the believers which he gave to the messengers and what was this he was referring to the verse which our imam sab read earlier ya ayyuhar rusul kulu min at tayyibati wa amilus salihah oh messengers eat that which is pure and then do good actions the ulama and mufassirin have written that oh messengers eat halal and do good actions there is a link if you eat halal then you it will take you towards good actions it is similar to the other verse ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqin or you who believe adopt taqwa have the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay with good people if you stay with good people you will adopt taqwa if you eat good if you eat halal then you will do good actions then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam led another verse ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kunu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned about a man ثم ذكر الرجل يطيل السفر اشعث اغبر يمد يديه الى السماء ويقول يا ربي يا ربي ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام فانا يستجاب لذلك an amazing hadith and we need to ponder over this hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there is a man and he is long in his journey he is in a long journey and he is in a disheveled state his hair is disheveled he has got dust on his body and he is raising his hands to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is saying ya rabbi ya rabbi oh my lord oh my lord the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions all the conditions where a dua should be accepted a person who is a musafir in one hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that a person who is traveling his dua is accepted this person is a traveler not only a traveler yutilu safar long travel then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says ashath akbar he is in a disheveled state he has got dust on his body the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that there are so many people who that they look when you look at them they look very pitiful they are in a disheveled state they have got dust on their body that you think that who is this person but they are so close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala law aqsama allah law aqsama ala allah la barra that if they say qasam to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts their qasam when you are in a pitiful state allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you you get closer to allah this is why when you go to hajj you wear two sheets of cloth and then you go out into the desert you go out in arafat you go out in mina and you stay away from everything why because you want to be in a pitiful state so that your dua is accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to come out for salat al istisqa he used to tell them that come out in a pitiful state chadar lekar aa jao then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says yamuddu yadayhi ila sama he is raising his hands to towards the heavens in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says inna allah hayyun karim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very shameful he 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 is very shy when a person raises his hands towards him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not return those hands empty handed allah subhanallah dua man 
And then the person says, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, O oh my Lord, O oh my Lord. In another hadith reported in Tabrani, in Imam Ahmad's Musnad as well, that if a person calls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his name, O oh my Lord, O oh my Lord, then his dua is accepted. Four conditions mentioned in this hadith why this person's dua is accepted. And yet the Prophet goes on to say, His food is haram, his drink is haram, his clothes are haram. And he is nourished through haram. How can his dua be accepted? Haram giza ki wajase. Haram mal ki wajase. Because of haram income and because of haram nourishment, this person, his dua is not, the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is broken. Allah say, jo ta'alluk hota hai hamara, haram khane se wo ta'alluk khatam hota hai. Fa'anna yustajabu li dhalik. Kaisi dua qabul ho sakti hai? In another hadith, the Prophet says, La yadkhulul jannata jasadun ghudiya bil haram. That that person will not enter into jannah. That body will not enter into jannah which has been nourished through haram. Today, what are we eating? We don't know. There is no caution. When we go to the shop, we say, the Malala says, that, be careful what you eat. Don't go to any restaurant. Don't go to any takeaway. Make sure it's approved by certain organizations which take care in making sure they look after the Muslim community. And you say, no, Malala, what are you talking about? He's a Muslim. I'm going to a Muslim shop. He says, halal there. I should trust him. But this is what's going on in the Muslim community. I've given you examples. But when our Muslim community goes to buy the Rolex watch from another Muslim, then he will check the watch from the front and the back and everywhere. Let me check. I need to check if it's a proper Rolex. Islam ek par, Rolex apni par. <laughs> When you go to buy a car, you've seen it advertised in auto trader. You phone the person up and his Name is Abdullah. You don't say, okay, oh, chalab, musulman hai, gari say you. We have to go and buy the car now. You still, in fact, if it's Abdullah, then you'll take your mechanic with you. Bye, musulman hai, dhoka dene wala hai. Chalo, saad mein, dekhne ke liye. Jab gari kharib ni hai, to uswag sahi dekho. Gari kharib ni hai, sahi dekho. Musalman ho ya na ho, no problem. We have to make sure the product is correct. In fact, when we go to the pound shop, pound shop, and you see something for a pound, but it's a new product, it's a new product. Fon nikalte hai. Ben? <laughs> Sister, have you ever bought this product? Only going to spend one pound. One pound product. It's a new product. Even then, she's phoning her sister to say, do you think it's worth buying this? <laughs> do you think it's worth buying this? Then she'll buy the product and use it only two times in her lifetime. But even then she checked with her sister whether to buy it or not. But when it comes to your deen, when it comes to your religion, when it comes to your ta'aluk and your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you say, this is a Muslim brother. This says halal and I will buy it. Koi fikar nahi. 
देन वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू चेक यहां पर एक पाम बिगड़ेगा और यहां पर दिन बिगड़ेगा Here you are losing one pound, and here you are losing your connection with Allah. When Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam read this verse, "Ya you are Rasul kulum min al-tayyibat wa amal al-saliha," or the other verse, "Ya you are Nadina amal kulum min al-tayyibat ma rasaqnakum," has a sad that Allah Taala no was sad there. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "The O Prophet of Allah." Make dua that I become mustajab with da'wah. That my dua is accepted all the time. So then, the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Atib mat'amak takun mustajab with da'wah. Make your food halal and your duas will always be accepted. As a Sheikh Zulfiqar, Dhamad Barakatu mentions a beautiful story about a student in his own madrasa. And he says that there was a student in my madrasa who was becoming hafiz of the Quran, and he was finding it very difficult. Yadi nee horata. The teachers used to tell him different ways, different methods of how to learn. Nothing. The teacher called his parents in and said, "How long does he read at home?" They said, "He reads lots." They can't learn. Eventually, Sheikh Zulfiqar says, "I called the parents and him as well." Myself, <coughs> and I asked them, "Does he sit to read at home?" They said, "Yes." Does he make effort? Yes. Everything I asked them about their life. Then I asked him, "Where does he eat?" And he said, "Ye takeaway se aata hai, ye restaurant se aata hai, ye." Ziyada tar ham bahir se khate. Most of the time we eat from outside. Just like today, in our day and age. No Friday, Saturday, Sunday goes without a takeaway or restaurant. उसके बगैर काम नहीं चलता हमारे बच्चों का. बहुत नुकसान होता है. बहुत नुकसान होता है. हम समझते नहीं हैं. Why? Why do you think Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said that this chicken here, which has been so slaughtered by the same person, but not said Bismillah, and this chicken here? Which the, slaughtered by the same person, and he says Bismillah. Why did Allah say you can eat this and not eat this? Is liye ke uska asal dil ke upper parta hai. Allah ka naam liya hua dil ke upper asal parta hai. Hamare jism ke upper parta hai. Why? If you want to become a good person, if you want to become a good person, hamare ulama kya kehte? Ya yu al ladina amanu taqullah wa kunu maas sadiq nek logo ki sabat ikhtiyar kar. In the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave a beautiful example of a good friend. He said, "A good friend is like a perfume seller, a person who sells oud, a person who sells perfume. Keep friendship with him. Why? Because if you go to his shop just to meet him, then if he's a generous person, he might give you a bottle." If he's a little bit conjus, <laughs> if he's a little bit stingy, then he'll say, "Come here, and he'll just give you little testers." And if he's very conjus, if he's very very stingy, then he won't give you anything. But by sitting there, you'll still come out with a good smell. And this is the example of sitting with good people. If this is the effect. Of sitting with good people, then what is the effect of the food that goes into your bloodstream? Allah. जो हमेशा आपके साथ रहता है, अगर अल्लाह का नाम लिया हुआ जानवर है, तो उसका असर दिल के ऊपर पड़ता है. When a doctor says that you have been eating too much habshi halwa, now you stop sugar. आपको diabetes हो गया. When a doctor says You have got heart problems. Now you need to go to walk in the park. Now you need to do exercise. Now you need to stay away from fatty foods. Why? Because they did an X-ray, they did an MRI, they did an angiograph, and they looked into your heart, and they saw that 
आपके हार्ट के अंदर the vessels they've gone when the there's blood clots etc etc so therefore you need to exercise doctor <coughs> this is because they can see the physical heart ek hota hai physical heart and the other one is the spiritual heart they tell you not to smoke cigarettes why because it will affect your heart your physical heart they tell you not to eat fatty foods because it will affect your physical heart they tell you to walk and run so that it helps your physical heart but unfortunately these doctors and the hospitals through mri scan and through ct scan they cannot see your spiritual heart because if they could see your spiritual heart they would tell you eat halal on which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is taken because that is the best food for your spiritual heart बहुत असर पड़ता है वी वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड सो एज अ शेख जुल्फिकाम यू ईटिंग ऑल दिस काइंड ऑफ फूड देन यू टोल पेरेंट्स फ्रॉम फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन यू स्टॉप ईटिंग फ्रॉम आउटसाइड एंड यू बाय जेन्यून हलाल मीट एंड पोल्ट्री फ्रॉम दिस दुकान एंड वेन यू मेक द फूड से बिस्मिल and start feeding him this food this child who was finding it difficult to become hafiz within months he became hafiz of the quran subhanallah within months ye to hame nazar nahi aata isliye hum you know what's the difference what's the difference between this chicken and that chicken nazar nahi aata but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yuhillu lahum at-tayyibat wa yuharrimu alayhim al-khaba'is allah is the one who makes he has made good things halal for you and he has made bad things haram for you aaj log puchte hain musalman bhi puchte hain unfortunately muslims will ask you mana oh, na why is wine haram why is alcohol haram why is pig haram and there are scientific reasons lekin musalman ho kar हमारा सही जवाब तो ये है कि चाहे हम समझे या ना समझे अल्लाह के हुक्म के ऊपर हम मानते हैं और जो ये सवाल पूछे इफ एनी बडी आस यू नेक्स्ट टाइम कि पिक क्यों हराम है या अल्कोहल क्यों हराम है साइंस के अंदर जाने की जरूरत नहीं है द ओनली थिंग दैट यू नीड टू टेल द पर्सन कि भाई चाहे आप समझे या ना समझे ये बात समझने की जरूरत है कि हमारी अकल महदूद है सुबह ये बात समझने की जरूरत है कि हमारी अकल महदूद है वॉट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वेदर वी अंडरस्टैंड द पिग इज वाई इज हराम और नॉट हराम वेदर वी अंडरस्टैंड वाई अल्कोहल इज हराम और नॉट हराम वॉट वी रियली नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड is that our intellect is limited and whether we understand the reasons or not we still submit to the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what we need to understand <coughs> there are time has gone on and there are many other things that we could mention what we need to do now because of the food industry and the condition that it is in we need to be very very careful we need to be cautious जिस तरह हम घड़ी खरीदने के अंदर देखते हैं गाड़ी खरीदने के अंदर देखते हैं, एक पाउंड की चीज खरीदने के अंदर देखते हैं इसी तरह हलाल खाने के अंदर देखने की जरूरत है वी नीड टू बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल वेरी वेरी कोशस इन मेकिंग श्योर दैट द फूड दैट वी ईट इज डेफिनेटली हलाल इवन इफ यू हैव टू पे ट्वेंटी पेंस मोर Thirty pence more for one chicken. <coughs> Once I was going on radio to talk about halal, and before the halal show, I went, I, I looked up the yellow pages to, or, or on the internet to find a kosher shop. जो Jewish की दुकान होती है, जो halal chicken, जो kosher chicken बेचती है. And I phoned them up. And after phoning them, I said to them, "How much is one kosher chicken?" I said I don't want to buy from you. Wo khush na ho jaye. I don't want to buy from you. I just want to know just He said one kosher chicken 9 pounds. 
नाइन पॉइंट इसलिए कि वो बहुत सख्ती के साथ उसकी निगरानी करते हैं नाइन पावर्स और उससे महंगी भी मिलती है एंड टुडे इफ वी सी वन चिकन वन पाउंड थर्टी एंड वी सी अनदर चिकन वन पाउंड सिक्सटी एंड वी सी अनदर चिकन टू पाउंड देन यहां हलाल लिखा है एंड दिस वन इज मच मोर कोशस इट्स सर्टिफाइड बाय ए वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच इज टू पाउंड कहां जाएंगे हमारे वाले वन पाउंड थर्टी क्यों पैसे देखते हैं अपना ईमान नहीं देखते ईमान को मत बेचो डू नॉट सेल योर ईमान फॉर अ फ्यू पेंस इट इज बेटर टू ईट वेजिटेबल्स इट इज बेटर टू ईट वेजिटेबल्स टू ईट डाउटफुल डाउटफुल हलाल मीट एंड पोल्ट्री हजरत शेख उल हिंद रहमतुल्लाही अलैह when he was a prisoner in malta abhi kal maine par when he was a prisoner in malta they never used to receive meat they used to receive vegetables they used to receive dal they used to get and they used to cook their own food in the prison then as they got to know the prison guards they started to give them meat and in that prison with hazrat sheikh ul hind was his own colleagues but there were also ulama from syria and there were ulama from turkey so when they gave the meat they asked the guards where is this meat from they said this meat is from australia and we keep it frozen and in those days they never had freezers they used to keep baraf they used to keep uh, uh, ice and they used to keep this meat in the ice so the ulama of turkey and syria said that because we are in this state where we are in prison and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission to eat the meat in a condition when one is majboor one is in a condition where they have to eat something and also this meat is from the jews or the christians we can eat it the ulama of syria and turkey gave the fatwa hazrat sheikh ul hind rahmatullah alayhi said to his colleagues that we will not eat. it might have been jaiz to eat it it might have been permissible to eat it but the sheikh ul hindra mutallah ali said no hum nahi khaye and then because of his taqwa and his caution the ulama from turkey and syria also stopped eating that meat aur aage ja kar kya hua ke they then had friendship with the gods and they started to bring them live rabbits No. first they used to get rabbits that were slaughtered outside by friends but even this hazrat sheikh ul hind rahmatullah ali said no i'm not going to eat this and then they got them live rabbits that they would do zabah themselves and they would eat them allah pak ne woman yattaqillah yaj'al lahu makhraja jo taqwa ikhtiyar karta hai allah pak unke liye darwaze khol deta hai subhanallah subhanallah my friends my brothers sisters this is a really really delicate subject what we eat affects our heart if you eat proper halal it goes into your blood stream and it will take you towards halal actions but if you eat haram or doubtful it will take you towards doubtful or haram actions it has a huge effect your ulama are here seek guidance from them where to eat from in your local area inshallah they will guide you to places which are doing proper halal according to the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us mm-hmm. to understand the importance of halal and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us taqwa similar to that of the salafi salihin and i will finish with the quote of hazrat umar farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he used to say that we leave نترك تسعة أعشار الحلال خشية الحرام. We leave ninety percent of halal in the fear of haram. As Umar Farooq رضي الله تعالى عنه used to say that we leave ninety percent which we know is halal, but we have a little bit doubt. We leave this as well just in case we fall into haram. Ninety percent. And our condition is 
that we will take 90% of doubtful because we might think it's halal. Mm. I was the opposite, totally opposite. Oh. And then, whenever people used to ask them, the Salaf used to say, Ittaqillah fina. Have fear over us. Have fear over us. Wala tut'imna illa al halal. And do not feed us except that which is halal. Why? Because We can have patience over hunger. We can remain hungry. But we will not be able to bear the fire of hell. And this is what we are talking about today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi wa bilal alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Wa shabhallah wa bihamdihi. Wa shabhallah wa bihamdihi. اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك العظيم سلطان اللهم لك الشكر كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك العظيم سلطان لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا من الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وعلت الوجوه للحي القيوم اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ولانا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا على النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتغفنا مع الأبرار ربنا أعلنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا صرف عنا عذاب جهنم ربنا صرف عنا عذاب جهنم ربنا صرف عنا عذاب جهنم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاصرين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اكفنا بحذالك عن حرامك وأغفنا بفضلك عن من سواك اللهم اكفنا بحذالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عن من سواك اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار يا الله يا كريم يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله أنصرك بعد ما مغفرة فرما يا الله حلال روزي كي توفيق نصيب فرما حلال كمائي كي توفيق نصيب فرما يا الله حلال کھانے کی توفیق نصیب فرما یا اللہ ہم سب کے گناہوں کو معاف فرما یا اللہ ایمان کی اوپر پختہ نصیب فرما دے یا اللہ ہمیں ایمان کی اوپر چلنے والے بنا دے یا اللہ جہاں کئی مسلمان پریشان ہیں ان کے پریشانیوں کو دور فرما جہاں کئی مسلمان بیمار ہیں ان کو شفاء کامل عاجلہ نصیب فرما جہاں کئی مسلمان مظلوم ہیں مظالموں کے حق میں ہدایت لکھی ہوئے تو جلد اسچل ہدایت دے رہی ہے نیس تو نابود کر دے یا اللہ پوری امت کے اندر ہدایت کی ہوایوں کو فیلا دے یا اللہ پوری امت کے اندر تقوی نصیب فرما دے یا اللہ خاص طور پر ہمارے نوجوان نسل کی حفاظت فرما ان کے جان مال کی حفاظت فرما ان کے عزت عبرو کی حفاظت فرما اور خاص طور پر ایمان کی حفاظت فرما یا اللہ ہم سب کو موت سے پہلے پہلے سچی پکی توبہ نصیب فرما یا اللہ سچی یا اللہ اچھی موت نصیب فرما یا اللہ ایسی حالت میں موت نصیب فرما کہ تو ہم سے راضی ہو یا اللہ بہترین جگہ کے اندر موت نصیب فرما بہترین وقت کے اندر موت نصیب فرما بہترین حالت کے اندر موت نصیب فرما کلمہ لا الہ الا اللہ محمد رسول اللہ کے ساتھ موت نصیب فرما یا اللہ تو راضی ہو جا یا اللہ تو راضی ہو جا یا اللہ یا اللہ تو راضی ہو جا تیری رضا مندی نصیب فرما دے یا اللہ ہمیں تیرا بنا دے اور تو ہمارا ہو جا یا اللہ تو ہمیں اپنا بنا دے اور تو ہمارا ہو جا یا اللہ ہمیں نیک بنا دے ہمارے اولاد کو نیک بنا دے یا اللہ تمام بزنس والوں کو صحیح طور پر کاروبار کرنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما یا اللہ صحیح طور پر تقوی کے ساتھ یا اللہ تیرے خوف کے ساتھ تقوی کے ساتھ بزنس کرنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما ہم سب کو صحیح طور پر ایمان کی اوپر چلنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما ہمارے دنوں کے اندر تقوی نصیب فرما تیری محبت نصیب فرما تیرے حبیب کی محبت نصیب فرما تیرے نیک لوگوں کی صحبت نصیب فرما یا اللہ جو مانگا وہ بھی عطا فرما یا اللہ جو دلی تمنا ہے ہمارے دلوں کے اندر ہے یا اللہ جو چائز تمنا ہے یا اللہ وہ بھی نصیب فرما ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خطه سيدنا محمد واله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين